Good evening and welcome back to another evening devotional. My name is Matthew Johnson and I'm glad that you're joining us again for another night of Advent as we get ever so closer to Christmas. Friends, I hope that these videos have been helping you move along and helping prepare your hearts and your minds and your souls for the coming of Jesus to at least celebrate at Christmas. And I hope that you are staying safe. I'm hoping that you are enjoying time with family that live in your household or trying to communicate with them over the phone or via Zoom. I hope that you're being smart how you are communicating with each other and being safe in that way. I know the holiday seasons are hard and, and we've all had to make sacrifices because of COVID and everything that's going on. And all I can say is just hang in there, friends. God is with you. God is with us all and God will help us get through. It is a difficult time. It is hard. It really is. But remember to pray to God each and every day. And remember to rely on God each and every day. Because God does sit with us in the pain, be with us in the present, and will come to us in our hours of need. With all that being said, friends, let us go ahead and get to our scripture this day that we'll kind of get back to the theme of joy instead of being down about how the world is and everything that's going on this holiday season. Here's the scripture. This evening's scripture comes from John chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee, but he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks who drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water so that I may never be thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Today's scripture lesson is about Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. I'm sure we've all probably heard this at some point. If you want the whole story, just read through John chapter 4 all the way through 42 and you will have the whole story. I only took out some of it because all of it, while it's all relevant to us always. For this message, it's not all completely relevant at this point in time. But what I wanted to emphasize with us tonight is that God gives us what we need in this world. God gives us spiritual gifts that helps us get along. God gives us the strength and to move forward in difficult times. God gives us God's presence so that way we can feel God in those times of need, those hours of need, if you will. But also God gives us gifts that we have not really truly grasped. For example, the gift of grace, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life and forgiveness or atonement. If you think about it, Jesus came to atone for us, to forgive us, to help us correct our relationship with God, to help us be in God's good graces, so to speak, and to be reconciled with God. Paul talks about this throughout his epistles. But here you have Jesus talking about eternal life. The water that I would give is eternal life. 
And that is only made possible because of who, first off, Jesus is, and secondly, what Jesus did and is still doing. And so we have to think of that as one of the greatest gifts that can give us joy. We are given this joy, joyful feeling, if you will, because we know that this is not the end. Death lost its sting when Jesus died and rose again. And so when we think about all that we get in life, our gifts, our blessings, uh, and everything like that, we need to remember that those are to be joyful about. We need to be joyful about all of the things that we receive, whether they are blessings from each other, blessings from God, or you know, gifts at Christmas. We need to be thankful and feel joyful for them. Even if it's not something that you wanted necessarily, you should be feeling joyful and appreciative of what you did get because somebody thought long and hard about what to get you. They spent time, their own money to give to you. Likewise, when we think about God, we need to remember that God gifted to us the most wonderful gift of all, which was Jesus. God, that was an expensive gift. That was a hard gift to give because not only did God give us Jesus, God had to watch Jesus die. God had to watch Jesus die, God's only son. Now, I'm not a parent, I'm not a parent, but I do have animals, and I do call myself a fur parent, if you will, and one of my animals had to be put down this year. His name was Tucker, he was a cat, and I watched him die. It hurt, it hurt really bad. And I can't imagine watching loved ones who are withering away I can't imagine watching anyone that I love and care for die like that. But God did. Because God loves us so much, so much, that God knew that this was the only way, the best way. And friends, that is one of the greatest gifts of all, is the gift of grace, the gift of Jesus. God cared so much about us. God wanted us to be in right relationship with him. God wanted us to come and spend eternity with God, not be separated by sin and damnation, but to spend eternity with love, care. So during this Advent season, I implore you to give a special gift to someone. I don't know if it's someone that you love or someone that you know necessarily. It don't have to be a big gift. It can be just something meaningful. Something to say, I'm truly thinking about you and I'm thinking about who you are as a person and what you might need. Don't give money. Money's not, money you can give anytime. Give a gift. Sometimes the best gifts are the cheapest. Sometimes the best gifts are the homemade ones. The best gifts are the ones that we just take from the heart and give it to them. Friends, I'm not saying you should give a gift to everyone this Christmas. I, I know that money can be hard, but what I am saying is take the time tonight and think about a gift that you would love to give someone that needs it. Maybe that means giving a gift to someone that's homeless that you've seen on the streets. Maybe it's someone that you know is having a hard time medically or financially and you want to give them something that they would ha otherwise have to pay for. Maybe the gift is something more intangible. There are many things that we can give that are not bought, but they're still given. Jesus was not bought. Jesus was given to us. I want you to think about that when you think about the intangible things. Giving someone something does not mean that you have to give them a physical object necessarily, but sometimes it's the spiritual, emotional aspect of it that matters more. Friends, please give someone a gift. It can be someone in your household. It can be someone up the street. It can be someone across the world that you don't even know. But just give someone a, a gift, even, even if it's small, to help them know that they're loved, that they're cared about. So that way you can continue to grasp and try to understand what a free gift feels like in someone's life. 
And then I want you to think about what Jesus did. What God did for humanity. And remember that Jesus was the greatest gift of all. Wrapped not in wrapping paper or tissue paper, if you will, but wrapped in hay in a manger. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we come to you this evening as your humble people. We are thankful for the blessings and gifts that you give us on the daily basis and in our lives from the get-go. Lord, please allow us to be gifts to others and blessings to others as you have been a blessing to us and continue to bless us. May we find ways to gift to others what your love, your grace, your peace, your hope, and your joy look like. Because we know that through you, all things are possible. And through you, all the love in the world will never equate to what yours looks like. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for helping us know the reason of the season and help us never forget. Lord, we ask all these things through your Son. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Serve the Lord always. Give thanks to God as you give something to someone else. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. From my house to yours, good night, friends.